Hey everyone, my name is Cyrus, and today we'll be going over how to use the Pagely clone tool to create your own configuration file. The Pagely clone tool is basically a wrapper of Pagely's Pagely sync command, but allows you a little more granular control over what happens during and after the cloning process. This is a great option if you're consistently copying of your production to a staging site or need to clone multi-site to another staging multi-site. In the past, if you were to use Pagely Sync for a multi-site application, it would require some manual processes after the fact. With Pagely Cone Tool, this is not required. You can configure everything as you desire so that it runs just the same way each time you run the cloning process. As usual, I'll be using Pagely documentation to accomplish this task. Today I'll be using the Advanced Config Guide Pagely Clone Tool. I'm going to go ahead and go straight to the configuration cloning profile. Basic stuff essentially covers SSH access, which we have documentation on that and a screencast that you can find on the Pagely's YouTube playlist. I'm also going to assume you're already logged into your server so that we can go ahead and edit these commands and copy and paste them to our needs. Okay, so here I am on our server and you'll notice I found the absolute path to the application we want to create a cloning profile for. Next, I create a copy of the example directory that includes the conf.php file that we'll need to edit to create our cloning profile. One thing I want to note before I go over the settings within conf.php is that I've copied our wp-config.php file from our application and put it directly into our cloning profiles directory. I'll go over why this is necessary in a moment. Okay, so if we go to the cloning profile article and go to configuration options, you'll notice at the very top it tells us the bare minimum requirements we need to create a cloning profile. We'll need the source, we need the destination, the target host which will be set for us if we're cloning locally, and you'll need the home and site URL records of the destination application. For example, if you're cloning production to stage, the destination application would be the staging app. If you scroll further down, you'll see the more granular options we have for single site and multi site. The only recent variable will copy the last 100 posts from WP Post and any related records to Post Meta. Reset Target DB will reset the targeted application's database so there's a clean slate when it copies over the resource database to the target database. The scheme parameter changes the default HTTP scheme protocol to HTTPS. This is useful if you're forcing HTTPS. The skip DB parameter skips the database and just copies files over. And the skip file parameter skips all files and copies just the database over. Note that the skip file and skip database parameters can be used simultaneously if you want to sync certain settings that don't have to do with the file or the database. While it might seem like skip plugins and skip themes might skip the plugins directory or the themes directory, this is not the case. This is the same as the WP CLI flags, skip plugins and skip themes, which will basically not query plugins or themes when running commands through WP CLI. You'll notice for this next part, I've uncommented the copy array and I'm having our cloning profile copy over two files in particular, the wp-config.php file and our htaccess file. This is useful if you've hard-coded certain things that you want on your staging or target application. There are a few things you should keep in mind regarding this. Remember that I copied the wp-config file directly into our cloning profiles directory. This is required for this particular file. The other thing to note is, if you have hard-coded URLs, you'll need to adjust those to the new application. You can set this up in your cloning profile so it doesn't require any manual process. Further up in our conf.php file, you'll notice I've uncommented the CLI command variable. We have one command, wp cache flush, which will flush object cache for us. Further down, you'll notice that we have other options to ignore paths, which will ignore certain file paths or files in particular. We also can ignore tables within our database. This is where the cloning tool really shines in my opinion. In the past, when you wanted to manually sync or copy over a multi-site application to another multi-site application, 
It would require some manual steps. You need to edit WP Blogs and WP Site, for example, to make sure they match the new destination. And if you wanted to copy subsites in particular and leave other subsites left alone, that would require even more annoying steps. With the Pagely cloning tool, you can limit the cloning process to particular subsites you want cloned and ignore other ones. If our limit to multi-site array was uncommented, we'd see that the blog ID 1, 42, and 137 would be the only ones our cloning tool would copy. All other subsites would be ignored within that particular multi-site application. The final variable will just email you when the cloning process is complete. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the parameters, I've gone ahead and cleaned up all of the commented parameters that we're not going to use in the showcased example. We have our required parameters, the source, destination, target host, home and site URL, and then we have our additional parameters. We're copying over our wp-config.php file, and we're copying over the htaccess file. We're also running a wp cache flush, which will clear out object cache. I've actually taken one additional step here. I've copied our htaccess file from our destination application and put it directly into our cloning profiles directory, just as I did with wp-config.php. This is to avoid any hard-coded URLs from affecting the functionality of our applications after the cloning process is complete. So to see this in action, I've added this comment at the bottom of our htaccess file. It says, this is to show this htaccess file is from production, our site URL. If it shows in staging with the site URL modified, hooray! And I've also left a comment in our staging site's htaccess file at the bottom. It says, this is our staging htaccess file at the site URL. This should not exist after we clone the site over. I've also added something to our wp-config file in our resource application at the top. It's also a comment. It says this is to show this wp-config.php is from production. If you see this in the staging after clone, hooray. And if we look at our staging site's wp-config.php file before the cloning process, we'll see there's no comment in this section. Also made a few blog posts on our production and staging site, the resource and target site applications. The production site has the following post. Hey guys, production site post, and then contains some information that lets us know it is the production site post. When we look at the staging applications post, we should note it says our dated staging site post. This should disappear after we've cloned over it. Okay, so I'm at the clone provisioning site that support will provide to you when you have this set up. So we'll go ahead and log in right now. If support has enabled PHP and my admin for you, you'll be prompted to choose between PHP my admin or the cloning provisioning tool. Go ahead and click on go to clone tool. And then we'll see our custom profile right here. You go ahead and hit clone. Sure enough, we've queued the cloning process. Okay, so the cloning process is done. If we look at the HD access file, it did indeed update as we see here with the site URL. And if we check our wp-config file, scroll up to the top, we will see the same thing. This is to show the wp-config is from production. If you see this on the staging, we have indeed been successful. And if we look at our staging site, we'll see all the information looks as it does on production, including our post. Hey guys, this is the production site post and it shows the production site site URL. So our cloning profile worked successfully. At this point, we're done setting up our cloning profile and we can clone whenever we want to in the same manner we initially set it up as. I may create a multi-site cloning profile, uh, but that'll be depending on demand. We've pretty much covered all of the multi-site variables and at this point, you should be able to configure the profile to your own accord. Just contact support if you need assistance with any of this.